another hot day. It is, uh, summer is officially over now, I think, right? Like, after Labor Day, that's the end of summer? I think so. <laughs> Uh, but it's still in the high 80s and pretty humid, pretty nasty, all together. And what the fuck are these guys doing? I'm going the speed limit right now because there's fucking cops around this neighborhood all the time, so... I never, never speed through this part, but I gotta get around on this coke truck. Oh, squirrel. Don't want to hit that. Oh, fuck. That bum hurt my fucking nuts big time. Caught me right on my left nut, too. Big neck, patty whack, give a dog a nut sack. So lately, I've been watching a lot of videos uh, about people getting in wrecks and them going down and stuff. I mean, they're, they're, if you're a rider, it's a good thing to watch because um, you always kind of like, after you start riding for a while, you know, and you're real comfortable and everything, uh, it's good to give yourself a reminder about shit that can happen, just random shit. And I'm not just talking about like the big stuff where people go down hard, I'm talking about like I've been watching a lot of videos of just people just going down for like nothing. They're going down to like 10 miles per hour. You know, I just watched a video of Motonasi going down um, on his uh, WR250. All he was doing was making a left-hand turn off into a dirt road. It just so happened that that dirt road, um, there, there was a patch of dirt like right in the front and his front wheel washed out for whatever reason. Like, I don't know if he was holding the brake during that time or what like you'll have to ask him even if in this video he's not completely sure what happened to him uh why he went down how he went down all that kind of kind of bullshit but um yeah that stuff like another dude that was a uh, new writer went down and he also went down going slow as hell. He was pulling out of like a gas station parking lot on a two lane road and it was not busy at all. And all of a sudden he just low sides. Um, because he kind of panicked, he turned a little bit wide. Felt like he was, you know, gonna get into the lane of another car, the opposite lane. And he went down and that was it. Um, so, little shit like that. So I guess the point that I'm trying to make is don't ever try to get like overconfident because anything could happen to you. Like the smallest little tiny shit. And that has happened to me too. I've gone down before for the stupidest things like ever. Just little patches of dirt here and there. You know, it's, um, it's shitty but you gotta look out for it. And what multiplies the problem is that you stop looking for it because you've been riding for so long that you feel like oh well you know I'm comfortable I'm complacent don't ever become too complacent on your bike because shit like that can happen little shit that makes you drop your bike now it's not the end of the world like for the most part when that happens it's not the end of the world if anything when you wreck it hurts your ego that's what you feel like shit about, is your goddamn ego. Like, it's very, very embarrassing when people come up to you and ask you if you need help. Uh, when you know it's something that's stupid that you just did, that you, you know, pop right back off of. I mean, it's good that they do. I, I, I'm so happy that there are good people out there. Of course, there are some people that just ride by you. Uh, but there are so good people out there that want to check on you and everything, make sure you're all right, but Jesus Christ, man, it, it just feels like, you just feel like shit when you go down. Um, when you're not hurt, when it's a little tiny thing, it's, it's more or less your ego that fucks you up. Now, other things that fuck you up is when you actually go down at a pretty high speed and it's a bad crash. That is a mental thing that is hard to get over. Um, you just gotta learn what you did wrong, get back in the saddle and just 
try to get over it, but a lot of that sometimes even comes, you know, a lot, a lot of that comes can, yeah, a lot of that can come from being overconfident. Just like you know, I can hang a knee. I'm gonna hang off the fucking side of my seat when I'm doing low speed turns, <laughs> just riding around town. Yeah, you shouldn't do that shit. <laughs> um, I I know there are a lot of track riders like I'm gonna practice stuff on you know, the street and trail breaking and all that stuff. Like, I fucking would never do that on the street. Um, and you get too comfortable. You get too comfortable and you get a little bit too aggressive on the road and you go down. Because the road, condi road conditions suck. Roads are bumpy, roads have grooves in them, they have potholes, they have dirt, they have debris, they have oil. Um, they're off camber when you can't tell that they're off camber. There's a lot of shit that is on the road that you gotta look out for when riding. So I mean, that is one thing I'll say is do not get overconfident because that shit will bite you in the ass. Even if you're having a good time one day and you're like, hey, I'm gonna launch pretty hard today. Uh, I'm gonna practice my launch because I feel like I can and that could end up in a fucked up day for you. So. I don't know guys, <laughs> Dang, you know, be careful about that shit, watch out for yourselves, never, you know, let your guard down, I know it's really hard, like, I can say, I've done it before, it's, it's, it's freaking hard to be constantly, constantly in that, like, zone every time you're riding, especially if you ride all the time, you know, if you're riding daily, you got all this stuff going on, you're going to work, you're running errands, you got all this shit going on in your life, life shit, that can really, um, you know, take focus off of it if it becomes something that's monotonous to you. And again, complacent because you do it so often uh, and you feel safe. I mean, that it don't. I'm not saying be scared. I'm just saying, you know, watch out. Don't let that guard down, because that will come up and mess you up big time. tell you guys waiting for a train to go by on a bike sucks so bad usually <laughs> you're just hanging out here waiting for your fucking bike to overheat it's getting hot as hell and if you're like me and you got no fairings all that heat from your engine right down there by your legs is just coming up through the front of your legs up into your body. It's, it's a freaking awesome feeling. Wonderful. One of the things they don't tell you about riding a motorcycle, right? Yeah. <laughs> Plus it doesn't help anymore in the back since my exhaust is right there by my leg. So it's not like I can really move my leg back any either. Cause that thing is like a freaking furnace. I want fish and chips. And it's actually really hard for me to find good fish and chips. When I go to a restaurant and stuff and order it, it's never that good. It's always kind of soggy and whatever. I know this is gonna sound bad, but I actually do like the fish and chips that's uh, offered at Long John Silver's. How does that place stay in business? I have no clue. Like, they're being supported by um, all their other shit that is open. I guess because like I guess KFC owns it and Taco Bell owns it and all these other places um, I think Pizza Hut is part of it too oh, there's a bunch of bars down here it's pretty cool but anywho they're all into it and everything so I guess that's how they stay open but for every for whatever reason every once in a while again every six months I want <laughs> want <laughs> Long John Silver's that sounds so bad the funniest part is when I go there and eat um, it's I usually eat a late lunch so I don't eat lunch until like I don't know 1 30 or so so it's past the lunch crowd right and I'll go in there there's a lot of places down here I'll go in there and uh, 
the fuck is that guy doing? I think he's going the wrong way, but I'm not completely sure. Um, I'll go in there, I get my ticket, and they'll say customer number, and you know, I, I, I guess, they, I imagine they start from the start of the day to the end. And I swear to God, like my customer number will be in the teens. Literally, that whole place is empty. I never see anyone in there. There's never a wait for anything. Maybe one random person. Every once in a while I've seen in there. And, uh, damn. Customer in the teens? Like, customer number 17 at 1.30 p.m. That's not good for business. <laughs> that is very bad for business. I have no idea how they freaking stay open at all. But that's what I'm craving for lunch today. So, on my way back... Uh, it could be a stop for me. And that shit, guys, with the malt vinegar and everything. God, it's just, uh... I don't know. Just, it's just it, I guess that's one of my junk food vices that is just... I know it's so bad for me, but... I just love it. I love fish and chips. And it's so sad that they have, for me, in my opinion, some of the best fish and chips that you can actually find. Because most places don't do it. And if they do it, they do it poorly. Which is another reason why I would love to go to England. God, I would love to go to England and get fish and chips. I bet that shit is fantastic. And it's all over the place. But not here. In the States. In the States! My friends, people don't like fish. They hate fish. <laughs> <laughs>